I think I know the answer to the question, but the answer that I believe in comes from revealed religion, that God exists necessarily. I think that he has revealed his existence and in fact his necessary existence to human beings. How would you say that scripturally in any, in any sense of whatever, that God's existence not was you know, primordial, everything came from God, those can all be true and God's existence mm -hmm. still not be necessary in a logical sense. Because you notice in scripture there is no discussion of why God right. uh, exists at all. You could take the blankness of the Bible on this question as saying that the question is somehow illegitimate. But I think the real revelation would occur in the course of the history of the intellectual development of theism. Okay. But the, outside that tradition, however, there remains the fascinating technical question of what can be said about this just by thinking about it. Right. That there have been philosophical arguments that would show that it's impossible for there to be nothing. Descartes' ontological argument the modern modal ontological argument. All these purport to prove the existence of a necessary being simply by examining the concept. Then you have the cosmological argument, which attempts to produce uh, the same conclusion, but by reasoning from the existence of contingent beings, the things like us that could fail to exist, if there are things that have this weak grip on existence, this could only be because there's something that has a stronger grip on existence that lends existence to them. Uh, so some versions of the cosmological argument depend on a principle called principle of sufficient reason, that everything has a really satisfying explanation, everything. Unfortunately, you know, that principle seems to have untoward conclusions. It's not hard to get the conclusion that there is a necessary being out of it, that it's impossible for there to be nothing, but then it's also not hard to get out of the conclusion that everything is necessary, even the position of this table uh, at this moment. Well, naturally, if everything is necessary and something exists, then it's necessary that something exists and it's impossible for there to be nothing. The attack on the principle of sufficient reason says that it is entirely uh, legitimate for everything in the world, but it is not legitimate to talk about the world in its entirety. That's certainly what Kant uh, said about it. Another point is this, it says everything has an explanation, but then just take everything, then all the contingent propositions, conjoin them into one great big proposition, what's the explanation for the truth of that? Well, it can't be some necessary proposition, because a necessarily true proposition can never explain why a contingent proposition is true, and it can't be a contingent proposition because it's in there, yeah. and it would explain itself and every proposition has to be either necessary or contingent, so you get a contradiction. So, ontological argument, not very hopeful. Cosmological argument, not very hopeful because of the principle of sufficient reason. The question is, can you weaken the principle of sufficient reason in such a way so that it doesn't have really absurd consequences, uh, like every proposition is necessary, but it'll still do some metaphysical work. Now, here's a suggestion if there's an explanation for things of a certain kind, and it's contingent that there are things of that kind, that explanation has to appeal to something outside that kind. For example, if there's an explanation for the existence of elephants, it has to include some non-elephants. It can't be that the big elephant created all the little elephants, because you'd still have the big elephant right. to, uh, to start with. So that maybe, maybe God, maybe atoms, maybe the evolutionary precursors of elephants, something outside the class of elephants has to figure in. Well, now suppose just that it was possible for there to be something. So that means there's some possible world in which there's something. It's going to be true in that possible world that either there are contingent beings or there are no contingent beings, right? Suppose there are no contingent beings. Well, then that, there, there's a being in that world. There's no contingent beings. It must be a necessary being. So it's impossible in that world for there to be nothing. Okay, but then go to the other case. Suppose in, in that world there are contingent beings. Well, then there's an explanation for there being contingent beings. So it's either going to be a necessary truth that there are contingent beings or a contingent truth that there are contingent. Well, if there's a that would explain why there are contingent beings if it's a necessary truth in that world. There. But then it's impossible in that world to be nothing. So uh, it must be true in the actual world that it's impossible for there to be nothing. That, I claim, this argument deduces from just the assumption that it's possible for there to be something.